Hello, today we're going to talk about the Aborigines, the indigenous of Australia. We're going to talk about their history, their religion, their lifestyle and their music. But first you will get some information about Australia as a country. Australia is a big country with a population of 22.7 million people. The most of the population lives by the coast where they can farm. There is a desert in the middle of the country, which is an explanation of why they live by the coasts. The capital state of Australia is Canberra. Australia is one of the countries who have the most ethnically diverse societies in the world. As much as one out of four is born outside the country, and many people are children of immigrants who have immigrated to Australia. This means that the indigenous population of Australia is very low. Richness were the people no one cared about, and their ancestors were the Homo sapiens. The Homo sapiens were the first people to emigrate from Africa to search for new colonies around the world. The Aborigines appear to have arrived to Australia during the last ice age, and that they mostly likely arrived on foot by crossing a land bridge that connected Australia with New Guinea. It is possible that people from the southeast may have used some kind of watercraft to cross the sea to reach the southern continent. The southern continent may uh, became their new home because their land bridge began to melt. The Iceland became isolated because all the water around the Iceland made it impossible to leave. The distance had been too far to cross without the land bridge. The climate might, might have been similar to the climate of present-day Thunder with short summers, extremely long cold winters and perpetual winds. In the year 1788, there were about 750,000 Aborigines living in Australia. There were up to five to 600 different tribes, had over 250 different languages, but none of them had a real language. Aborigines have always been nomads. They had to move around a lot between the few places that they could find food and shelter because of the very dry landscape. They don't even have a worry for personal property, and they have always advocated about the land being for everyone. Britain have been sending their excess prisoners to North America for over 100 years, but the American War of Independence put a stop in practice 783. The English people were no longer able to transport surplus prisoners to North America. They needed a new place to send the convicts. The excess prisoners got shipped to Botham Bay, or Hell, as they called it. The prisoners lived very poor and half of them had shackles. The British people turned, turned Australia into a hell. Australia became the solution to their problems. The fact that there were local inhabitants all over the continent didn't make such impression on the colonies. The Aborigines had no written language that the English people found comprehensible. Clothes didn't exist on the Iceland, and their homes were nothing compared to British homes. The English people didn't like the difference between them, so they used them as sheep or free labour. Most of the Aborigines died. The reason was because of disease the British people brought. Another reason was because they got killed by military forces. In the 1800s, Aboriginal body parts were highly sought after antiques. They were traded by all sorts of people, from opportunities to amateur archaeologists. So people were digging up Aboriginal grave sites, those who didn't want to wait until the Aboriginal people died, simply shoot them for their bones. The Australian gold rushes stopped in 1851 when prospector Edward Hammond Hargraves discovered a grain of gold in a waterhole. People came from places all over the world to visit Australia, especially from America. Now there are about 455,000 Aborigines living in Australia. Only 2% are Australian citizens. About 30% of the Aborigines are unemployed, mostly because of lack of education. Most of them also live in the outskirts of town in poverty. The British people forced them to leave their homes and moved to the middle of Australia where they still live. That was because the British wanted the best land to cultivate. So the Aborigines were left to use only the desert to farm on. A lot of the Aborigines are also in jail because of alcohol and drug abuse. The population of the Aborigines is decreasing a lot. 
and they have also been forced to live in the middle of Australia where there is most only a desert. Because of the tough living conditions, they live 15 to 20 years less than the rest of the residents in Australia. Aborigines didn't get the right to vote until 1967, compared to the women who got the right to vote in 1902. People used to say that the Aborigines live in a developing country, and the Aborigines live in two worlds. They adapt to the modern society while they are living in their own society. They'll have normal jobs like teachers or car mechanics and even computer experts at daytime. But they are, com are totally different persons at their spare time. They live with one foot in the modern world and the other foot in the old world. The Aborigines who also live side by side with the laws of the country. They do have some other rules for penalties. They could cut off a finger as penalty get a spear in the leg, or even death. The white coop accepts that the aborigines have some other rules, but they could cooperate with each other. Aborigines live, believe that in the beginning of time, the earth was empty, cold, and flat. Then the earth began to boggle like a crock and burst. Creation beings had been created. These creation beings then created landscape features, plants, animals, and also mankind. They started to teach the people how to hunt, find shelter, and which ceremonies boys would go through to become a man. They became tired of all this teaching the humans how to live and how to act, that they sank into rivers or turned themselves into paintings on mountain walls. After an amount of time, they died in these objects. That period of creation is called dream time, and the time after that is called dreaming, and that is the time we are living in now. Aborigines use spiritual rituals to express their beliefs. Before the white men came to Australia, and they all lived a traditional life, they had a natural feature, for example, it could be a mountain, which they thought was their creator. Different tribes had different objects where they performed spiritual ceremonies. They painted their bodies with symbols that had messengers and they danced and sang songs. They did all of this because they thought that the soul of the dead creation being still was there. And through this ceremony they could communicate with their creator. They could ask for help or safety before a long journey through the hard and dangerous landscape. The dream time is something very divine for the Aborigines, and that is something that is still important today as it was back in the days. The music from the dream time are stories about the nature, and they are still current. The stories about the dream time is still living because they are being told and sung to the next generation. The Aborigines didn't have doctors, they had medicine men. They were able to use magic to see into the future and heal injured people. The medicine men had knowledge about which herbs, leaves and fruits they were going to use as medicine. And we still use medicines today that the medicine men had come up with for hundreds of years ago. One of the most important parts in the Aboriginal culture is music. And that is, just like for us, a part of their everyday life. The difference is that it means a lot more for them than it does for us. They also use their music in different important sacred ceremonies in order to bring rain, healing allies, wounding enemies and the winning of battles. Aboriginal music is taught and carried on to later generations by listening to performances and mimic them. The music is not fixed, but rather something that is varied or built upon in successive performances. There are three types of Aboriginal music. The first and the largest type is used in sacred and secret ceremonies. These songs can only be performed in a specific place, for a specific reason, like the bringing of rain, healing allies, wounding enemies and winning of battles. The songs and ceremonies of this type can only be performed and witnessed by men. But there are also women's secret ceremonies, a large proportion of which are connected with reproduction and songs for children. 
The second type of music is the sailing sacred. The men are singing while the women are dancing. This is the initiation ceremony of young boys. The sacred and the semi-sacred songs can only be performed in full at appointed ceremonial ground. The third type is a non-sacred or entertainment music. These songs are the only form of our Australian Aboriginal music that can be performed by any person, man, woman or child, at any time or any place. The best known form of these public events is the corroboree, in which the men dance for up to three or four hours continuously, while the women and children sing. Non-sacred songs were traded freely between tribes and spread easily, often crossing from another language into another. Thank you for today and thanks for watching and we hope that you have learned something about the Aborigines and in which way they are exposed.